Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the voice of reason. Well, it's good to be back. Uh, obviously, I was uh, off of the uh, net uh, for a few days, uh, went down to a uh, undisclosed location in the uh, southern United States to see one of my sons who is in the military. Had a uh, great time down there. Enjoyed myself for the few days I was there. Uh, unfortunately, not a lot to do in that particular town, but nonetheless, uh, it was good seeing my son. Now, <clears throat> we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. Now, today, the major headlines are the following. Russia produces almost three times more artillery shells than the U.S. and European nations combined. Russia produces three times more artillery shells than U.S. and European countries combined in terms of what they are able to supply to the Ukrainians. Now that's concerning. If you are on the Ukrainian side of the equation. So why are the Russians able to produce so much ammunition and munitions for its military? Well, it's very, very simple. The Russians have reached a full-on military industrial capacity centered on the ongoing war. They are fully mobilizing the entire nation, specifically when it comes to the ability to produce armaments. At the start of the conflict, in the Russian defense sector, there were just under 2 million employees. Right now, well after two years of fighting, the Russians now employ 3.5 million and growing defense sector employees. Most of their, fa their factories are now running round the clock. Round the clock. And this is very similar to what we observed in some ways during World War II. The Russians ramp up defense spending, they ramp up defense capacity, they ramp up the mobilization of its populace. Now we have not seen the full-on mass mobilization of the actual military as of yet. Obviously, if, if push comes to shove and there is a direct conflict with NATO or the United States, we would very quickly see the Russian military expand at an unprecedented pace, much larger than it is currently now. You would, in fact, see mass mobilization. Now, there is that discussion of the hidden mobilization that is going on in Russia, and obviously the Russians are expanding their military greatly. But what else are the Russians working on that is progressively outpacing Western nation states? It is fully autonomous attack drones. Right now, fully autonomous attack drones here in the United States and Western European nation states especially is a taboo topic. The research, research and especially the deployment of full-on artificially controlled, artificially intelligent controlled kamikaze drones are not being used by the West. Obviously, there's research that is going on to look at the deployment of these systems. 
but on the battlefield right now, they're not being used. In Russia, we are seeing these systems being used. We first saw the Lancet 3, and we have seen updates to various versions of the Lancet that include the ability of these Lancet kamikaze drones to loiter over the battlefield and then self-select targets on the ground that match a database of targets for which it can attack, especially Western-style main battle tanks, armored fighting vehicles, what have you. Now these systems are advancing. The Russians are producing more and more of these systems. And we are currently seeing these systems over the battlefield as you watch this program. They're there. The Russians are using them. The West is not using them. So the Russians are gaining very practical experience in these weapon systems. They are gaining experience in friend or foe identification. And they are gaining experience in updating and upgrading the intelligence of these attack drones. And I predict probably within the next year, year and a half, most of the drones that the Russians will launch against Ukrainian, possibly NATO forces, in the upcoming Third World War, many of these systems you see now will be much more advanced, much more capable, because of the battlefield experience that both the technicians, the developers, and the systems themselves are gaining in the present. They're all over the battlefield. Drone systems right now are causing a significant amount of casualties. The Russians were late to the game in terms of drone capability. But they're catching up at a very rapid pace especially in these fully autonomous, artificially intelligent driven drones that are attacking ground targets. And there are more systems that the Russians are working on uh, currently that will take to the field very, very soon that will enhance both the lethality and the capability of these systems or systems like these. Not only that, the Chinese. The Chinese are gaining valuable insight into how the West conducts itself in war. It's learning a lot about the sense and shoot capability of the United States, especially with the United States performing real-time intelligence processing and then sending that information very quickly to Ukrainian units, especially high Mars units and drone units on the ground in eastern Ukraine. Very concerning time we are in right now. As I've talked about before, the likelihood that we see some sort of of peace plan come into play and we see the conflict de-escalate is incredibly remote. It is more probable, as I've talked about before, and I, I imagine you're probably tired of hearing this, it is more probable that the conflict will escalate and get worse, bringing in other nation states and eventually we see all out World War III occur. It is more probable right now that's where we're heading as opposed to an immediate peaceful solution of the conflict. Both sides 
are rapidly running towards global war. Now again, the production capacity of the Russians, the expansion of the Russian military, uh, we are going to see renewed large-scale offensive operations by the Russians probably very soon. We will most definitely see that take place in the later summer months that will occur. But right now, the Russians have absolutely no intention of losing this war. They fully understand if they stick to their game plan that the West is going to tire of this conflict. It is already tiring of this conflict. There is internal strife here in the United States about this very conflict, which will steadily increase. And that's without the deployment of U.S. forces directly fighting with Russian forces. What happens when the U.S. starts to take casualties in this fight? or the fight or the war expands to other locales, such as maritime engagements. And eventually, as I've said before, all-out war in which the continental United States would be most likely directly attacked by Russian weapon systems. The only way the West can win this conflict is by directly attacking and engaging and destroying Russian military capacity. The Russian military industrial complex has to be attacked by the West if it believes it can win this war. Obviously, if that happens, the Russians are going to counterattack Western targets, both in Europe and, again, if U.S. forces strike Russian forces in Russia, the Russians are going to attack locales in Alaska and possibly targets inside the United States or in the Western Pacific. And at the very least, U.S. targets in Western Europe. Western Europe will be attacked in the upcoming conflict, without a doubt. How effective those attacks will be, we'll have to see. But I can guarantee you Russian cruise missiles, Russian ballistic missiles, long-range Russian drones will be striking targets in Poland, Germany, Denmark, France, the United Kingdom, and now Finland, Sweden. And then if it escalates even more, we will then see the use of possibly tactical nuclear weapons, followed by strategic nuclear weapons. And the genie is out of the bottle. And that's where we're heading. That is the current road that we are on currently. Again, the conflict is either going to resolve itself and we find ourselves in a less than ideal peaceful situation, or the conflict is going to escalate fact. Well, it's good to be back. More to come very, very soon. As always, thank you for joining us. Have a good day.